Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about all the paginated report updates that's just been boom, 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 being released constantly. Stay tuned. Okay, paginated reports, man oh man. The product team, the engineering team, Chris Finland and his team, they've been dropping updates like week after week after week. And I just haven't been able to keep up. But guess what? I'm going to kind of sum all of these releases up in one nice video. Okay, so instead of all this talking, you guys know how I like to do, head over to my laptop. So the first thing I want to talk about is the report paginated report builder, right? So they released this. I did a video on it a couple of weeks ago. Go check it out if you want to get all the details about it. But you should definitely, if you're developing paginated reports, for Power BI, you should be using the paginated report builder. Um, and so if you go to go to your web browser, and I talked about this in the original video, if you go to your web browser, sign in the Power BI, click the little drop down, you can get a copy of that paginated report builder. It's a pretty nice tool and it adheres to all the limitations or whatever the features that's available in paginated reports for Power BI, all right? That's the first update. It was great. The next update was they gave us access to all these new different data sources. So when it was originally released, when paginated reports were originally released, um, you only can connect to a limited number, but now they're expanding it. So you can connect to Oracle, you can connect to Teradata, but guess what? You can also connect to XMLA endpoints. What, what? Yes, you can. And you guys may not understand how big this is, but the reports that you develop with in Power BI, the data set that you use to develop those reports, you can use the exact same data set with your paginated reports. You don't believe me? Let me show you. Okay, so what you do is you go out to Power BI, you go to your workspace. So you go to our workspace, you go to settings of your workspace, click on premium, and you'll see this little workspace connection. Go ahead and copy it. It even tells you, copy to clipboard. All right, once it's copied, you go back over here to your data source, in the Power BI Report Builder, you click Data Sources and you'll see the, the short list. It's a short list of data sources that's available, but it's gonna grow. It is definitely gonna grow. Choose Analysis Services. That's right, Analysis Services. Click Bill, pop in the um, workspace name, the XMLA endpoint, click the drop down, and then what you'll see is if you haven't connected before, it'll take you through this modern uh, authentication experience. Once you authenticate, you can see there's my there's the data sets that's available. It's kind of like having an analysis server, and these are just your databases on that analysis server, all right? So I choose it, I click OK, click OK, and bam, there is my data source. So if I want to create a data set, I just right click on it, I say add data set, and I give it a name. We're gonna call this XMLA endpoint. You don't even have to know how to write DAX to use this, to use connect to these data sets because there's a nice query designer that's just drag and drop. But if you know how to write DAX, go ahead and pop it into that text editor, or you can just say, okay, Patrick, I wanna look at my invoices by year. So I expand calendar, drag year, then I expand measures. Wait, uh-oh, customer, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is that just customer? Where's my implicit measures? Well, well, there's one thing, right? So. Power BI Report Builder does not pick up your implicit measures. So you, if you want to use measures, you can do some things with your DAX to you know, kind of create them dynamically. But what I recommend is you go back to that model. So I'm going to go back to my original model here, and I'm going to add a measure. So you see there's my implicit measure, but it didn't pick it up. So what if I, if I want a measure and I want to use it, I can create one. Let's just call this total sales equals sum of extended price. Something really simple, right? And save it. Okay, and then publish. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish this back out. Choose the same workspace. It's gonna say, hey, do you wanna overwrite it? Click replace, right? Once it publishes out, I go back to my report. There's a little reconnect, the little refresh icon here. I click that icon, let's give it a second. Reestablishes my connection here. And now you can see there's my invoice, drag over my total sales. And now if I click to execute this, there's my query with my values, I click okay. And watch this, watch this, wait for it, wait for it. There's the DAX, there's the DAX right there. So it wrote the DAX for me. So if you don't know how to write DAX, it'll write some for you. Or you can freehand it and write your own DAX, completely up to you. I click okay, 
Now I can start designing my reports. So cool using the same data set, one central repository. But what I can also do is, you know how in Power BI Desktop, you can create these things called composite models. So I can connect to a direct query and an import. I can't use a live connection. So I'm live connected to an AS model, right? An XMLA endpoint. If I want to, I can add as many data sources. Well, I'm sure there's a limit, but I can connect to a SQL server. I can enter my own data. I can connect to Oracle. I can have all these different data sources right here in my package a report so I have this crazy feature of composite models that's not quite available in the desktop but if I need to do something like that I can use paginated reports okay Adam may go no 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 but it is it is right so I have my own crazy version of paginated uh, composite models okay that's two quick three three features right the report builder the new data sources and now I can have these crazy composite models. Okay, these, this is great stuff. So when I'm all done, like a cooking show, you guys know how I do. I'm gonna switch over to a nice report that I've created. This report's got a lot of formatting and stuff like that. When I'm all done, I'll upload and I'll publish this report to Power BI. So what you do is you go to your part, you go to Power BI. So I'm gonna go to Power BI over here. And all you need to do is go to a workspace. Yes, the workspace today must be backed by premium capacity. You click get data and you choose file, get files and get, then choose local file or where that file is and then you upload that file. What I heard was, and a little birdie told me this, is you'll be able to, instead of taking these, the, all these clicks, you'll be able to actually do this right from Report Builder. When, I don't know, but a bird told me this. Okay, all right, so once it's uploaded, so we'll go back to the workspace. Once it's uploaded, it's possible that you'll get a notification saying, hey, you need to fix your data source, you know, provide the credentials for your data source. If you just click on the schedule refresh icon, you can go and set up your database credentials. Maybe they're already set up, maybe they're not, but maybe you'll need to do that, okay? What you'll also notice, so, is now I can add my paginated reports to an app. So before, when they were initially released, you couldn't do this, right? You couldn't add them to an app, but now you can. So when you publish those apps out, you can include paginated reports. What? There's like four or five features that I've already talked about, but I haven't even got to the best one. I'm saving the best for last, and I'm about to hit you with it right now. So think about this, right? So I'm a salesman. I have about five or six customers that I work with. They buy a lot of stuff. I make a lot of, you know, I get a lot of bonuses for selling all this stuff to them, but they call up and say, Patrick, hey, I need my invoices. So what I was doing was every day I would open up my report. Let me show you what I was doing. I would open up my report, my paginated report and run my report, choose some variables, parameters, I'm sorry, and click view report. And then what I would do is export my report to a PDF. Yep, you can export this to all different types of formats. I can ex my, export my report to a PDF for that particular customer and then email it for all five or six of my customers. Oh man, you talking about not efficient. That is not efficient, too many clicks. But guess what? They were thinking about me, right? The engineering and the, the paginated report team, they were thinking about me and they enabled subscriptions. You gotta be kidding me. So check this out, let me show you something. They gave me the ability to create these subscriptions. But initially when the subscriptions were released, I only can use default parameters. But now what I can do, let's say my five customers, right? I have one customer in New Jersey, one in you know Washington State, Colorado, whatever, right? I choose the parameter I want for that customer. There's a subscribe button. I click subscribe. Then I can say, use my current parameters. I can say, okay, this is your weekly invoices. Oh, what I don't need like that. I can say, if you have any questions, call me at 777-9311. Um, and I can say, send this out weekly and only send this on Monday. So what will happen is when I click save and close, I can add all the people that I want to receive this email um, to this list. And then every you know Monday morning at 9.45 a.m. or whatever time I specify down here, you can see, I can also give them access to the report. So at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, starting on June the 1st, give this person access to the report and email this as a PDF. So you have different choices up here. Not only can you, you know, not only can you email as PDF, but Excel, CSVs, you know, lots of different choices here. I'm gonna do PDF and I click save and it'll automatically do it. Once it's saved, I can actually, if they call me up and they say, Patrick, I want it right now, I just click run now. And if I go to my email box, so let's go to my email box. So once the subscription runs, right? This will land in my email box. I can click a link to go to the report. I can open up the PDF. Let's go ahead and open up the PDF to see what it looks like. 
open up my PDF and look at this nice clean invoice reports. So you can see there's two different pages for each individual invoice for that customer that they've made since the last week. What, this is crazy. This is phenomenal, I love it, right? You can try to do something like this with Power BI reports, but may take you a little bit because I got a slice for each customer. With paginated reports, it's exactly what it is, paginated reports. I can have multiple pages in a single report. I love it. Thank you guys so much for doing this for me. You're making my life so much easier. What do you guys think? These are some phenomenal updates of paginated reports. You got any questions? comments you know what to do post them in the comments below if this is your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel hit that subscribe button if you like my video big thumbs up as always from adam and myself thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video i want to blah <laughs>